Welcome to UK Explored. This video is a little different because I took a look around an area recommended by you, the viewers, and that's the colourful and notorious St Paul's in Bristol. So to explain how I got here briefly, I released a video a few months back covering the five most dangerous areas in Bristol, and my list for that video was based purely on published crime stats. And those areas were Bedminster, Hartcliffe, Kingsdown, Temple Meads, and of course the city centre, all of which do have seriously high crime rates. But ever since I published that video, I've been bombarded with messages from Bristolians telling me that St Paul's and Easton, which I also have a video coming out about soon, are by far the two most dangerous areas in Bristol. With a few people alluding to the fact that there is a high number of unreported crimes in these areas, which I very much believe, and that the general seriousness of the crimes that are reported are worse than other areas. And several people just flat out said that it is scary in St Paul's from a personal experience, and that was good enough for me. In fact, a couple of you guys told me to not even go there, it's that dangerous. But I'm not the smartest guy when it comes to listening to sound advice, I'll be honest. So I spent a few hours in St Paul's, avoiding any confrontations, thankfully. But I did speak with some locals and I got a good feel for the area. So let's start with a little history. St Paul's is credited as being one of the first suburbs of Bristol. And it's in a great location. It's close to the city centre, to Cabot Shopping Centre. And it has a good mix of residential and commercial buildings. Demographically, there is a large African Caribbean population in St Paul's and according to Wikipedia that started back in the 1950s as many immigrants arrived from Jamaica and Ireland as well. I couldn't get any quality data about St Paul's demographics on its own as it's in a ward grouped with other areas in Bristol. But you'll see some references to Jamaica like the Rastafari Culture Centre and other things in the footage and you'll get a good feel for the area. Browsing the history of St Paul's, there is a very obvious timeline of police operations attempting to crack down on organised crime activities, there's been riots and racial tensions over the years, and even today things don't look great as there's a serious gun crime problem, drugs problem, and there are gangs known to operate in the area that have beefs. Talking about crime, the published crime rate for St Paul's is 146, and although it's believed that a lot of crimes go unreported, this is still around double the UK average and it means that the area is dangerous on paper. And you can tell too, right, just from walking around, even in the day. When I was there, I saw loads of used drugs paraphernalia scattered around, evidence of day or night drinking. I also saw a couple of small homeless encampments and I spoke to the guys there, but they asked me not to film them, so I respected that. And I had to pass a few groups of kids in black hoods and masks, which seems to be the trend these days. Looking at some of the news reports attached to St Paul's, it's pretty ugly. There was a murder just last month that made the national headlines. A teenager was murdered a few months before that, and there have been other murders over the years. Serious assaults like this one are pretty common. A lot of it is gang related, and I'm sure a lot of it goes unreported. But as we all know, antisocial behaviours always flow out into the greater community. On a positive note, St Paul's hosts a carnival almost every year that goes down really well. It does a good job of bringing communities together and tourists to the area, but there does always seem to be a scuffle or two on the day. Walking around St Paul's, as you can see from the footage, there are some impressive historic buildings, as well as the large residential properties that Bristol is known for with basements and multiple stories. But for the most part, the area is unkempt and not in great condition. And it's an obvious problem with fly tipping and littering. And even for Bristol, the sheer volume of graffiti is pretty nuts. And something residents and businesses simply have no choice but to embrace, I'm sure. Although seeing this guy on his hands and knees early in the morning scrubbing away, it's a reminder that not everyone wants their personal property tagged. Personally, I like the murals like these that are clearly done by talented artists. But let's be honest, most of the graffiti you see here is just mindless tagging. Here is the most densely populated housing estate I came across. It was a bit intimidating walking through these arches. It was fairly early, I could see there was a lot of CCTV and warning signs. And I could hear loud music coming from several of the flats. There were people screaming and arguing and some weird banging noises. But it's all publicly accessible so I had a good look around. Crime and poverty doesn't always go hand in hand, but there is usually a connection, and this is certainly the case in St Paul's. Bristol City Council lists the area as one of the most deprived in the city, and I'm sure it's also one of the worst in the country as well. This always hits me harder than the crime stats, to be honest. There have been endless social studies into the effects of poverty on families, and children in particular. 
The government needs to be doing a lot better in this area. I'll leave it at that. I think it's worth mentioning Turbo Island when talking about St Paul's, which is a small area of land in Stokes Croft, which is bordering St Paul's. Described on the Turbo Island info site mm -hmm. as a vibrant and thriving open air social hub, this is basically an area where some homeless people drink throughout the day and night, and they usually keep an open fire burning, as you can see here. Honestly, it's pretty crazy. It's clearly a major health and safety issue having a fire on the pavement where there's a lot of traffic and people walking through. The local council have tried to shut it down numerous times over the years, but due to some technicalities over who owns that patch of land and the persistent nature of the people who keep starting the fires, it's still very much alive and used and it's very much part of Bristol's culture. I actually hung around with the people there and shot some video. I might release that soon. And they were a good bunch. They invited me to come back and hang out one night with some tins, which I'm considering if I can make the time as I'm sure that would be an experience. Also, let me know if any of you guys want to come out and hang out too, right? That'd be pretty wild. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.